Okay. I'm sorry, Judge. Um, Judge, you know, Victoria was on my caseload the entire time that she was in felony drug court. Um, as you saw in the court summary, we did work with her extensively every time there was a violation. Um, we used progressive sanctions. Um, we did have DDRF in abeyance, um, you know, back on um, 9-20-2023. Um, instead of that, we went ahead and gave her the chance to do Alpha Home, which she did complete. However, she went right back to her old criminal thinking, um, people, places, the basics that we teach in um, felony drug court. Oh, no, um, here's we the thing. A day is always great when there's unexpected things because then you're not stuck with the mundane. Originally, we were going to ask the court for a reset, but we have since worked it out. So. Okay. That's fine. And then just kind of like off the record before we start, Judge, just so you know, uh, the new number one has already been dismissed. Okay. Up in County. All right. Court is calling uh, 2020 CR 8296 State of Texas versus Noah Nellum. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Allie Jackson. Defense. Lindsay Shaw for Mr. Bunk, uh, for Mr. Nellum. And are you Mr. Nellum? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Did you review the document entitled Motion to Enter Adjudication of Guilt? and revoke community supervision and first amended uh, motion to revoke community supervision with your attorney. Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. And are you the person who's listed as being on deferred adjudication in those motions for a period of 10 years, beginning on October 1st, 2021? Yes, Your Honor. All right, state. Yes, Your Honor. We're proceeding on violation of condition number two, which is on the first amended motion to adjudicate. Yes. That on or about the 26th day of February 2024 in Williamson County, Texas, the defendant, Noah Jonathan Nellum, did then and there admit to use of an illegal use of controlled substance, namely THC, in violation of condition number two. How do you plead to that true or not true? True. State, do you waive other allegations? Yes. Any objections? No objections. All right. Uh, Mr. Nellum, did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number two, the court could find it true, grant the motion, Sentence you up to life in prison and up to a ten thousand dollar fine. Yes, Your Honor. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number two? Yes, Your Honor. The court will find violation of condition number two true. Is there a proposed agreement? There's a proposed agreement, Your Honor. There seems to be an issue with he was supposed to. It was not a part of his uh, conditions of probation, but he was supposed to be going to like some residential in Round Rock. Yeah, in Round Rock, and it looks like that never really happened. Okay. Um, and so he does continue to have issues. So at this point, because he's being supervised out of county, um, we're trying to work with him. But we are, and the probation officer's recommendation is to try ISF cognitive and substance abuse tracks. Okay. So here's let's go off the record for a moment. On this case, I don't know if ISF cognitive will work. And this is why I'm saying this. I remember this case, and he was going to be at Round Rock, and he was at the Mayofu home. So what has happened with that? Is there okay. a reason he didn't make it to Round Rock? What? He was living in Round Rock. That's where his father lives. So it's my understanding it wasn't an actual, that facility, I'm not very familiar with it, but it wasn't an inpatient situation. He was living with his dad, but he had um, counselors or people from that program that were trying to help him. No, we, I remember distinctly, we actually had a hearing by Zoom. The people from that home were by Zoom. And he was supposed to be living at the Mayofu home. And I did research on it. Everybody did research on it. And I actually have the actual address as 3062 uh, Blantry Bin in Round Rock. And that's what I understood from reading the notes on JD, Your Honor. But I've been informed that that apparently never happened. And I know previously we had a violation of condition number two. And it was denied alternate amendment. And he was to um, be, be referred to back to that home. So I think clearly that home was not working for him. I think him being in this inpatient lockdown facility of ISF would better suit my client. I mean, he's here. He stands before the court knowing that he needs. Oh, well, treatment. here's the thing. I'm not I'm not going to revoke because I know everything right. that we've previously tried to do on this case. I'm just trying to figure out whether ISF is best for him. Usually with ISF cognitive and probation, can you help with me with my understanding of ISF cognitive? If you don't have 
the cognitive skills, they can't make you have the cognitive skills. That's why I think we were putting him at the Mayfew house because there are other issues that are going on. So. Yes, I did, but I don't know like if they wanted me back or not because. All right, so here's the thing. We've got to find a place for him. And I do know that with the Mayfu home, they were not going to put him in a situation because he's young, where he's with extremely older people. So they were putting him in the in-between group with people who are in their 20s. So did we get a report from them? We did not. We didn't, and they didn't file anything of like, none of the stuff from the MTR had like mentioned to them. All right, let's do this. Are y'all available to come back this afternoon? Yes, sir. Any objection to the court reaching out to the Mayfew house and seeing if we can get them to zoom in so we can find appropriate placement for him? Not at all, Judge. All right, all right, we'll come back in the afternoon. Thank you, Judge. Sure. And Gloria Cardenas, if you could please unmute and start video. Ah, so we don't have the person from... No, but she has more information. All right. She may, she may be able to provide a little bit more insight. All right, we're going to go back on the record on 2020 CR 8296, State of Texas versus Noah Nellum. If we're going to have the parties reannounce, please, for the state. Allie Jackson. Defense. Lindsay Shaw. And are you Noah Nellum? Yes, All right, we have uh, the officer by Zoom. Any objection to Ms. Cardenas testifying by Zoom, state? No, Your Honor. Defense? No, Judge. All right, Ms. Cardenas, could you yes. raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, Your Honor. All right, you can lower your hand, state your name for the record. Gloria Cardenas. All right, does anyone have any questions for her or is everyone okay with her testifying in narrative? I'm fine with narrative, Your Honor. All right, so we're here on Noah Nellum. I know that the court had ordered for him to be at the facility in Round Rock. Can you just tell us what is happening with him and why he wasn't in the facility in Round Rock. So the facility in Round Rock offers three has three options. One is group home living, foster care setting, or the individual's home. Previous to this individual home setting where he was placed with his father, he was placed in foster care setting with the foster mother, which he had previously also committed the offense of using a, uh, unauthorized use of a vehicle. Um, and now that he's being placed with his father, um, he again committed the same offense. All right. So this is what I don't understand. We had, and correct me if I'm wrong, everyone, we had a, a long hearing over this case by Zoom with the persons who are actually at the Round Rock facility. And they informed the court that he would be staying in a group home, but the group home that he would be staying in would be age appropriate for him because they have some people in the group home who were younger and some people who were older. So there was a tight window of the persons who could be in the group home with him. And I was told by the person who testified that he was gonna be in a group home, not in a foster care setting. And then now I'm hearing that he was with his father and not in a group home. So I don't understand. And that's what needs to be explained to me. Why wasn't he in the group home? That is something I believe your honor that was brought upon by the group home itself. I don't know if it was the director or if they give the individual the option of maybe having him be placed in a foster care or an individual setting with a family member. Um, that is something that is not done or it, they didn't direct it towards or give me information on what was going to be set in place in All regards right. to that. Okay. Any questions? No, Your Honor. Any questions? Um, no, Judge. All right. Thank you so much for coming in. So this is what's going to happen. We're going to recall this case. Someone from that group home needs to be here because I didn't order him to be anywhere else but the group home. And now we're here and I'm not going to revoke you because I said I wasn't going to revoke you, but now we're at the point, honestly, 
where you probably should be revoked because you keep doing the same thing over and over. And I know you come before me and when you, Rick can go off the record, when you come before me, you come in with this, I don't know what's going on. That's the expression you try to give me. But yet you keep taking cars that don't belong to you and you don't follow the court's orders. So we're gonna reset this and somebody from that group home is gonna be here to explain to me why you were not in the group home when they said that's where you would be. Why are they placing you in a foster home? Who knows why they're doing that? And then why are you being allowed to live with your father and nobody got permission from the court for that to happen. And now we are here. So we're going to reset this and I'm going to reset it for next week. Are you available? Uh, yes, sir. All right. We're going to reset it for next week. And is there any objection to me reaching out to that person from the group home in Round Rock to be here by Zoom? No, Judge. All right. Norma, can we reset this for next week? All right, so we're going to recall on the 30th. Uh, Officer Cardenas, are you able to be back here on the 30th? Yes, Your Honor. All right, and it can be by Zoom. Nobody objects to that? No, Judge. All right, so it'll be by Zoom, and I'm going to figure out the time. I'm going to try to call the group home today to see what time they can Zoom in, and then... Uh, we'll call you and work around your schedule as well. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. All right. Have a seat. Kyrie Ranford. And officer, I know you're waiting for me. Just give me a moment. Who's here for Karen Marino? That's fine. It's okay. All right. Court is calling 2023 CR8119, State of Texas versus Karen Marino. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Jason, your hand, your honor. Defense? Lauren Lefton for Ms. Marino. Are you Karen Marino? Yes, ma'am. All right. Showing you what's entitled Motion to Enter Adjudication of Guilt and Revoke Community Supervision. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. Are you the same Karen Grace Marino who was placed on deferred adjudication in 2023 CR 8119 for the offense of terroristic threat or family or household? on October 11, 2023, for a period of 16 months. Is that you? Yes. State? Yes, Your Honor. Violated condition number two, on or about the 10th day of November 2023 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Aaron Grace Moreno, the defendant there failed to submit to drug testing as directed by the supervision officer in violation of condition number two. Yes. How do you plead to that? True or not true? true. We'll waive the remaining violation. Any objection? No, Your Honor. Did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number two, the court could find it true, grant the motion, find you guilty, and sentence you up to one year in the Bear County Jail and up to a $4,000 fine? Yes. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number two? Yes. Court will find violation of condition number two. Is there a proposed agreement? There is, Your Honor. Yes. Revoke the individual offer deferred to assess a 30, day, 30 days in the Bear County Jail. That is our understanding, Your Honor. All right, so what has she done on probation? What have you done on probation? Can you raise your right hand for me? Do you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth will help you, God? Yes. All right, you can lower your hand. State your name for the record. All right, what have you done on probation? Um, I just do the UAs and just report each month. When I do pay um, monthly, every time I get paid, I, I have a, like um probation. I got paid that too. All right, let me see here. There weren't any classes or um, any treatment or anything that was originally ordered. Oh yes, I, I see that because I see I'm the, not the one who placed her on probation. So when's the last time you were drug tested? Um, last week on and Friday. I do it now every week on Friday. Oh. I did it last week Friday. All right, and if you're drug tested today, what are the results gonna be? I pass. All right, so we're gonna do a drug test. If you pass your drug test, then I'll follow your plea bargain agreement. Yeah, that's good. Okay. And and just so the court knows, Ms. Marino was fully employed at Dunkin' Donuts. She did make arrangements with her employer for this, so she is responsible. Yeah. Okay, sure. All right, let's do the UA. Okay, great, thank you. 
Court is calling 2023 CR8119, State of Texas versus Karen Marino. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Jason Garrett, Defense? Lauren Lefton for Ms. Marino. Are you Karen Marino? Yes, ma'am. All right. Showing you what's entitled Motion to Enter Adjudication of Guilt and Revoke Community Supervision. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, are you the same Karen Grace Marino who was placed on deferred adjudication in 2023 CR 8119 for the offense of terroristic threat or family or household on October 11, 2023 for a period of 16 months? Is that you? Yes. State? Yes, Your Honor. Violated condition number two, on or about the 10th day of November 2023 in Bear County, Texas, with Lieutenant Karen Grace Marino. The defendant there failed to submit to drug testing as directed by the supervision officer in violation of condition number two. How do you plead to that? True or not true? We'll waive the remaining violation. Any objection? No, Your Honor. Did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number two, the court could find it true, grant the motion, find you guilty, and sentence you up to one year in the Bear County Jail and up to a $4,000 fine? Yes. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number two? Court will find violation of condition number two. Is there a proposed agreement? There is, Your Honor. Yes. Revoke the individual offer deferred and assess a 30 day, 30 days in the Bear County Jail. That is our understanding, Your Honor. All right. So what has she done on probation? What have you done on probation? Can you raise your right hand for me? Do you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you, God? Yes. All right. You can lower your hand. State your name for the record. Karen all right, what have you done on probation? Um, I just do the UAs and just report each month. All right. When I do pay um, monthly, every time I get paid, I, I have a, like a um, probation. I got paid that too. All right, let me see here. Yes. There weren't any classes or um, any treatment or anything that was originally ordered. Oh, yes. I, I see that because I see I'm the, not the one who placed her on probation. So when's the last time you were drug tested? Um, last week. On and Friday. I do it now every week on Friday. I oh. did it last week, Friday. All right. All right. And if you're drug Marino? tested today, what are the results right, going to be? So this was recalled for this okay. afternoon because the court so wanted a UA. Do. It's my test. understanding that it was negative. If you yes, pass your drug test, then I'll follow your plea That's bargain agreement. Thing. And according to your plea bargain agreement, okay, and, uh, the and state is asking for, for 30 days. days. Donuts, is that correct? And that's agreed okay, sure. to? All right, it let's is, do the UA. She has okay. six days credit okay. in at this time. So the court. All right, we're going to go back on the record and cause number 2023 CR8119, State of Texas versus Karen Marino. I was in the announced for the record for the state. The, the only thing that she had to do her. was all right. And are you Miss Marino? Report. All right. So and we're here because this was recalled for this afternoon. Oh, because Other things wanted a UA. So it's my understanding. I'm not inclined named. to give yes, her a judgment. Well, satisfied. Congratulations. I understand. That's but I'm seriously considering if according to your plea bargain agreement, that had been done. Uh, the state so is asking. Are you asking the court to follow the 30 your days? Yes. Is that correct? Are you waiving your right to appeal? Oh, All right, right, then uh, what the court and will do, the court to? will find you it guilty. Is, she has the court will give you credit, credit for any time term, served. The so court the will court sentence you to 30 days in the Barron County right, Jail. Uh, did you review the document entitled Trial She's Court Certification of Defendant's Rights right. to Appeal so, with your attorney? Yes. I wasn't did the you understand it? this plea, so, and did you sign it? The only right. thing that she had to do agreement. was because I followed report. your plea bargain agreement and, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Other thing in this case, so there's also a firm not finding of family violence judgment satisfied. because there's an affirmative but finding of family violence. You're not allowed to own or possess. There were any things that have been done. If you have so a question, are you asking the court to follow the, your agreement? You need to speak to an attorney. Yes. Do you understand? Are you waiving your right to appeal? All right, we can go off the record. Good luck to you. What the court will do, the court will find you guilty. The court Corey will give you Poinsett. credit for any time served. The court will sentence you to 30 days in the Barron County Jail. Uh, did you review the document entitled Trial Court Certification of Defendant's Rights to Appeal with your attorney? Yes. Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, 
All right. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. And in this case, there's also an affirmative finding of family violence. Because there's an affirmative finding of family violence, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? All right, we can go off the record. Good luck to you. Thank you. Ma All right. Thank you. You're, You're welcome. welcome. Corey Puente. All right, Victoria Hernandez. Hello. Hi, Emily. Okay, oh, I don't have a file stamp for this case. And then I'm gonna write the number. Oh. Oh no, I think they're about to plea. Are you all gonna? Is this gonna be reset, or you all worked it out? Right, no reset. Worked it out, Judge. I agree, but. Oh, uh, counsel, can you give me a trial court certification? How are you doing today? I'm doing okay, ma'am. Okay. Oh, ah, that's okay. It happens. I'm telling you, it feels like a Monday, but everybody's happy. So it's a happy Monday. So here you go. Thank you. Uh, he's... Oh, let me see. Let me give this to you. And you let me know. And then I'm going to write down the number on this so I can give you the file on Nellum. Okay. All right. Court is going to call uh, 2020 CR 8599 State of Texas versus Victoria Hernandez. Can I have parties announced for the record? Thank you. For the state. Defense. I'm Michael DeLeon for Ms. Hernandez. And are you Ms. Hernandez? Yes, ma'am. Did you review the document? Abandoned means to leave a child in any place without providing uh, motion to and necessary adjudication care for the child under circumstances supervision under which attorney, no reasonable, similarly it? situated adult would leave and a child counsel, I know you were recently appointed to represent a person commits an offense Hernandez, if having custody, care, or time? control we are of a child younger than 15 uh, years old and intentionally abandons the child in any place under circumstances that expose the child to an unreasonable risk of harm. And do you have any objection to proceeding, Ms. Hernandez? recklessly or with criminal right. negligence. Are you the same, or Victoria Ibring Hernandez, who was placed on deferred adjudication in 2020 CR 8599 for the offense of abandoning the child with intent to return on January 4th, 2021 for a period of three years? Is that you? Yes, ma'am. All right, state. Yes, Your Honor. Violated condition number 13 on or about the 23rd day of April 2024 in Bear County, Texas. Defendant Victoria Arrange Hernandez did then and there operate a motor vehicle without a valid Texas driver's license in violation of condition number 13. How do you plead to that, true or not true? Yeah. Uh, the way that remaining violated conditions. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. Did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number 13, the court could find it true, grant the motion, find you guilty, and sentence you up to two years in the state jail facility and up to a $10,000 fine? Did you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition 13? I do. Court will find violation of condition number 13 true. Is there a proposed agreement? No, there's not. All right, uh, state, what are you requesting? 
Defense, what are you requesting? Your Honor, a probation had made a recommendation to extend for one year place Ms. Hernandez in a DDRF, followed by a mixed supervision and a parenting class. And uh, as the court could see, she was in felony drug court. Um, DDRF was held in abeyance last time as an option. And um, she is motivated to go to DDRF, be successful in it. Apparently the wait is only three to six weeks. And um, that's what we're asking the court to do. All right, any objection to the court reviewing the court summary? No objection, Your Honor. All right, uh, Ms. Hernandez, I don't think you're a good candidate for probation. And let me just tell you why. Felony drug court is an intensive form of probation, I know that. But from reviewing the court summary, it's not as though felony drug court you mess up one time or you make a bad choice one time that they say, oh, we're not gonna deal with you anymore. And I'm looking here at the sanctions that they gave you over there. And let me just tell you how many sanctions they gave you, which means this is how many chances they gave you. You understand? So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. That's what you're coming to this court with. 36 times felony drug court was seeking to work with you. So you see where my mindset is? And do, you, and do you understand why? Yes, Your Honor. And so I placed you on probation here. And even here, you had a motion to revoke filed against you. And that was on, well, it was heard on March 9, 2022. And that's when you were sent to felony drug court. So I don't think you're a good candidate for probation. Judge, if I could. Yes. One thing for Ms. Hernandez, the good thing about felony drug court for her was that um, it is our belief that it, it has worked. She has been clean since September, and if she was tested today, she's going to come up negative. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, it's not like she totally. Yeah, there's several things that she did do correctly in felony drug court. Um, there are a number of things, obviously, as the court has seen. Uh, that weren't done correctly, but she made a lot of her appointments and um, she has ended up clean, which is the point of felony drug court. I just don't think you're a good candidate. I mean, felony drug court, that's a very good program. And what felony drug court has placed, you know, the issues they have with you? I mean, they're major issues, but instead they are still trying to work with you. And they tried to work with you a lot. Here's the thing. I know a lot of people want to stay on probation. They do. Like nobody wants to go to prison. I don't take any joy in sending the people to prison. And everybody that I send to prison or everybody I place on probation, I actually do remember them. Even as a defense attorney, I had some clients who ended up in prison. Guess what? I still remember them and wondering how they're doing and, and, and hopefully they've changed their life. And it'll be the same with you. I just don't think you're a good candidate for probation. I think we tried. And so, And Judge, the only other thing is she's never been given a felony conviction before. That's why she wants to stay on defer. She's motivated for it. And that's why she was hoping that the uh, probation's recommendation would be followed. All right. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to find 13 true. I'm going to revoke, find you guilty, and I'll sentence you under 1244. Does anybody want to state any objection to her being sentenced under 1244? All right. I'll sentence you under 1244. Let's talk about the time. Yeah. How much time does she have? Anybody know? Hmm? How about before all the past few years? Yes. So... I was going back and forth with the drug court personnel in this case. And 
there is some concern um, if she is given a sentence JSAT. Oh, it's not going to be JSAT. Okay. Okay. All right. And, and what was the concern though? Now, now you've piqued yeah. everyone's interest. Judge, um, they feel that a JSAT sentence is not The reason why she was kicked out of drug court and so forth, they just don't think JSAT would be appropriate. Um, and some other concerns in regards to her child. Ah. So if she was given JSAT, they just have concerns in regards to that. Now, if she was continued, then that would be something different, but they are not in agreement with anything JSAT. All right, so what is the issue with the child? From my understanding, there is a CPS open case um, for neglect and possible abuse. Not on you, it's on the father. Okay. There's an open case. And state, you're asking for revocation? Correct, you are. So we are not opposed to revocation, but we are not with JSAC. Okay. I, I mean, what, what I can tell you, I wasn't going to give her judgment satisfied. I just, um, let me just tell you what my thought process is for. Yes, my sir. thought process in reading everything was I, I saw that there's a child involved, right? This case involves a child and it's um, abandoned with intent to return. So I understand. And I understand that that, child's, that child, they're telling the report is special needs. Yes. But she's making horrible choices. At the same time, Judge, if she goes to DDRF, it doesn't kick the can down the road. It puts her in a position where she, her, potentially she'll be a better citizen, better productive parent. So DDRF only lasts for long. Probation only lasts for long. If we help her continue, she has a possibility of, you know, one more chance. And the court has given plenty of chances before. But if she's given one more chance, there's a possibility that one day she's going to be uh, still with this child and she needs to be, that child needs a, a stable parent and DDRF will help in that potentially. Uh, state? Is the state still recommending revocation? Well, Judge, a little of uh, child is involved. I mean, the state would be opposed to DDRF to follow up and um, she is appropriate, hopefully, because it looks like the person from those that we have in our system that the defendant might have an anger management problem and any type of additional help might help for the future of that child at least. Well, I will tell you what your special needs child has saved you. And you are not saving your special needs child. So where is the child now? He is with his father at the moment. The CPS Kate like is um, on the father and the the current girlfriend. And um... so let me get this straight. And correct me if I'm wrong. So you are saying that there's allegations of abuse, and those allegations are abuse against the father who he's with. Yes, your your honor. And the, the case has been open for about, uh, they, so they opened one CPS case, my court did, because of the, the what they had found in my phone. And then um, the caseworker got in touch with the uh, What did they the find? Father. Wait, raise your right hand for me, please. You solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth. Yes, yeah. So help you God. Yes, yeah. All right. So State your name. Victoria Hernandez. What did they find in your phone? Uh, so they found that, so I had found out that my kid's father was locking my son um, in the room and I wasn't aware, like I had, like, so later on they said that it was because like the autism doctor recommended that they lock the door at night, but I thought like they were just locking the, my son in the room like all day. And so that's what drug court found on my phone when they were going through our messages was me like, getting mad at the dad about locking my son in the room and so they called cps for neglect 
and then the dad got another CPS case because I believe the school called CPS for neglect as well. All right. Any objection to somebody from drug court zooming in? Objection. Objection. All right. Just have a seat. Drug court is going to zoom in so we can get to the bottom of what's going on. And uh, Mr. Garhan, I'll let no, I'll let you all continue to talk. But this is Miss Garcia, so she's going to give us information. All right. We're back on the record in 2020 CR 8599 State versus Victoria Hernandez. All right. So we have Officer Garcia by Zoom. Any objections to her being by Zoom defense? No objection. Your Honor. All right. And the state has already stated that they do not have any objections. Officer Garcia, could you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth so help you God? Yes, Your Honor. All right, you can lower your hand. Uh, do you waive any confidentiality that Ms. Garcia has as it relates to uh, your time in felony drug court? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I don't mind. All right, so you're, you're giving up that right? Yes, Your Honor. All right, any objection to her uh, testifying in the narrative? No, Your Honor. All right, Ms. I'm sorry, Officer Garcia, what we're trying to discover is whether or not she should be revoked or whether or not I should send her to DDRF. What has transpired is there's been a mention of a child with special needs because I was inclined to sentence her uh, to the Bear County Jail under 1244 to one year. Uh, can you tell us how she was doing? What have been the issues with her in the drug court and what would be your recommendation for her? Um, Judge, you know, Victoria was on my caseload the entire time that she was in felony drug court. Um, as you saw in the court summary, we did work with her extensively. Every time there was a violation, um, we used progressive sanctions. Um, we did have DDRF in abeyance, um, you know, back on um, nine 2020, 2023. Um, instead of that, we went ahead and gave her the chance to do alpha home, which she did complete. However, she went right back to her old criminal thinking, um, people, places, the basics that we teach in um, felony drug court. Um, we were we were working with her and um, we happened to do a phone search only because there was another phone search done on another participant kind of, you know, kind of intertwined the two. And that is the only reason why we found out is like it fell into our lap. Um, it wasn't something that we were looking for. And we had concerns, again, because of her special needs child. Um, we do have another case against her in CPS. So the case, the CPS case, there is one pending for her, the father of her child, and we do also have one for herself. All right, do you know, uh, with regards to the case for herself, what is that about? Because of what was found on her phone. Ah, so what was found on her phone has absolutely nothing to do with the child's biological father? It's actually both of them are involved. But again, he was the only one that the case had, the first CPS case is only on him. So when we found the information that included both of them, a CPS case was filed against her as well. So what was on her phone? Did it have to do with, I don't want to get into too much, but what was on her phone? Did it have to do with her as it relates to her and her child? Yes. What, I mean, concerning for her to be around her child. Absolutely. Okay. And then considering her case that she's on as well. So um, with that being said, we have seen often that we work with the individuals and there wasn't really enough progress and we don't feel comfortable with, um, one, probation doesn't like to recommend revocation, um, but we have seen in drug court that a lot of our um, participants are getting credit for time served. So we didn't want her to just, um, you know, get a JSAT and be done because then there's no problems that are fixed. And then we have the concern for the son um, because she will be able to go back and just 
be around him. That was that was what she was trying to do while she was on my caseload. Um, so that is very concerning. Um, if I could recommend revocation um, without the JSAT, I would. And I would like to. That's what I would like for to happen. All right. Uh, do you have any questions? I do, Judge. All right. Officer Garcia? Yes, sir. Throughout her time throughout felony drug court, she tested negative on multiple occasions, correct? Um, there She did. However, she also tested positive. How long ago was that? Um, let me check. Drug test. Well, she did have a no show. So to us, that was April the 17th. That um is considered a positive in felony drug court. Um let's see, her last positive would have been September of last year. 2023? Yes. And again, she did go to treatment during that time frame before we just got her back reporting in person. That's all I have for you, thank you. Mm -hmm. all right. And uh, Officer Garcia, you all are not willing to accept her back, is that correct? No, Judge, we, we've worked so much with a Miss Victoria um, and it just seems like um, we're just hit, we hit a wall at this point. All right. Thank you so much for zooming in on such short notice. I appreciate it. Yes, Judge. You have a good rest of your afternoon. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. So with her, um, it's going to be revocation. Are you still insisting that what, what was in your phone was not related to you? I wasn't aware the second time around that I that a CPS case was put on me. I've been in jail. No, 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 no. My question is, is are you is. still saying that what was on your phone regarding your child is unrelated to you? No, no. Okay. Judge, um, in lieu of that, we're, we're asking for the minimum time in law. Apparently she has 158 days in custody over the past three, four years. And I would argue that, you know, she has done several things right. She's also done several things wrong, but she, there was several things. She did participate in the felony drug program and did a lot of good things. So we, we want the court to uh, reflect on that. All right. This is what the court is going to do. Court is going to revoke you. Let me see. Where is the trial court certification? Handed it to the court. I do have it here. The court is going to revoke you. The court is going to find you guilty. The court will give you credit for any time served. Uh, the court will give you credit if you successfully complete an inpatient treatment, because I see there was some inpatient treatment, maybe through alcohol. If you successfully completed that, the court will give you credit for that. And the court is going to sentence you to two years in the state jail facility. I'll recommend the therapeutic community. Uh, I can't force them to place you in there. But if you uh, request it, they will consider it. If you don't request it, they will not consider it at all. And I'll also request uh, mental health while she's at the state jail facility. Going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes. Sir. All right. Do you have a limited right to appeal? That right to appeal is as it relates to the allegations in the motion not the fact that you were on deferred adjudication because this is a felony conviction. You're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, sir. All right, we can go off the record. You're going to have to get your life in order. If you don't, your life is going to continue to spiral out of control. Felony drug court is a good program. They work with you for two years trying to help you and you still just want to do whatever you've been doing, which is not good for your son. I always tell people you're an adult. Your son is not an adult. Your son is 100% dependent on you, upon you, and you're just doing foolish things. Good luck to you. All right. Are we ready on Joseph Smith? 
Just one second, Judge. Sure. Okay, sure. All right, thank you.